let's bring in Bill Gavin, former assistant director of the FBI here in New York. He's now the president of Guardsmark, a global security company. Bill, it's good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Shep. Good to be here. We don't know about any specific ties. Can't confirm yet whether this is tied to Paris, but we do know that the people who perpetrated the acts in Paris got their guns from Brussels. It, Shep, it wouldn't surprise me at all that uh, Kulapali got his guns from that individual in Brussels. And that individual turned himself in, as you just reported, uh, based on the fact that he was more afraid of the authorities than he was of the, uh, of the terrorists, uh, or, or vice versa. But what has happened, I, w I will bet that he supplied guns as well to that other terrorist cell that they just uh, uh, intercepted in the vias. That wouldn't be at all surprising to me. G guns are mighty easy to get in that area, aren't they? They are very easy to get, and particularly if you're a noted gun dealer. And to bring them back into other European countries is uh, not very difficult. You have a valid passport. Nobody's going to look too t high. Rick Leventhal, the, the drive is about three and a half hours from spot to spot. and You really don't have to do much of anything in the way of checkpoints or anything else to get there, do you? In many cases, going from country to country in Europe is like going from state to state in the U.S. So, yeah, you may have to go through a, a passport control or some sort of checkpoint, but it's not as difficult as it might be traveling, say, from the U.S. to a foreign country to travel from country to country in Europe. Hey, Bill, to what degree? Of course, everybody's fear is heightened now. Uh, it, it always is after an event like this. But to what degree are there real concerns that people of this proclivity might be trying to do something here presently? I think there's a high degree of concern, Shep, now that we've heard that everybody, that the, that the ISIS or Al-Qaeda or whoever you want to call it, uh, has called for a worldwide uh, attack. I think there's got to be concern all over the place. Uh, these people uh, are vicious, and it's such a refreshing fact to hear the, the French and to hear the people from Belgium calling it what it is, radical Islamist extremism. It's not just some dust-up, as you have somebody from this country have us believe. Rick, do you still see the thousands of troops on the streets there? Is, it, is, is the presence still stepped up? Well, they're, they're telling us there are more than 100,000 troops and police officers spread out across France protecting sensitive sites, including Jewish schools and temples and mosques and other areas that could be targeted. You don't see large groups of them, but you'll see small groups of police and soldiers on the streets here. And of course, Shepard, we have to remember that there are at least 1,200 to 1,500 uh, French citizens who've gone to fight in Syria and Iraq with ISIS. There are thousands more across Europe that have gone to fight over there. And uh, the big concern here, as it was with the Kawachi brothers and others who've been to Yemen and other places that come back with training, that there may be many more out there, including perhaps uh, these people in Belgium who got training or were fighting over, over an ISIS, with ISIS in Iraq and Syria and then came back planning to carry out homegrown attacks. Bill, I keep hearing people on, on our air and elsewhere saying there's this refusal to call this Islamic extremist terrorists. Help me understand why... It is that so many people, especially on the political right, are jumping up and down screaming about this. You said that it's been classified as some sort of dust up. I've not heard it classified that way at all. No, I don't think it's classified that way. But the absurdity is that our country right now, our leaders are simply calling it terrorism. They're not identifying it for what it is. And it does a disservice both to this country. It also does but a disservice to Islam. Isn't the reasoning for that that? There's Islam, which is a, a religion based on peace, which more than a billion people around the world follow and haven't gotten into any trouble at all. And then there's people who have bastardized it and turned it into something that is not anything like Islam, that, that tells you go out and murder people for this reason and the other. They're two different things, aren't they? I mean, Islam is one thing, and whatever it is these people are doing is something entirely different. Shep, you're entirely right, and that's why we need to differentiate what we call them. To call to, to just say that it's uh, it's terrorism or Islamist terrorism is wrong. Islam is a is a religion of peace and and a great religion. You have to tell call it what it is: radical Islamist extremists. That does if you don't do that, you do a disservice to Islam as a whole. Okay, Bill Gavin, uh, Rick Leventhal, thank you both.